So one thing we haven't talked about a ton lately with the Nintendo Switch 2 is the power of the system, right everyone? We gotta get into the power. How powerful is this? What can we compare it to? And more often than not, we're talking about things like, oh, it's sort of like in handheld around a PlayStation 4 uh, with DLSS, maybe a PlayStation 4 Pro. And then in docked mode, it's definitely a PlayStation 4 Pro and maybe coming close to the Xbox Series S. Obviously, there's a lot of factors in this, and these are completely different types of hardware from AMD going to NVIDIA, you know, AMD processors going to ARM processors. So they're not even using the same technology. So an apples to apples comparison is very difficult. Uh, but there is some interesting stuff we have out there. And one field we absolutely should be able to make some comparisons to is the handheld PC space because NVIDIA, ARM, these sort of technologies are being used on PCs. I mean, we have ARM laptops coming up for crying out loud. So maybe the better comparison would be the Steam Deck. How does Switch 2 compare to the Steam Deck? Well, there was a conversation that happened on a podcast today by Moore's Law is Dead where he goes over some of this stuff and it's actually kind of exciting uh, even though they're a little tepid on it because they think the system should have come out in 2023. Uh, we're going to dive into that. We're also going to dive into what this all means for third-party support and the kind of games that we should be expecting. Also revisiting a couple of old things brought up in the past about third-party games on Switch 2 that should get people really excited for the capabilities of this platform. That being said, folks, we are on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So if you're enjoying this video, why don't you go ahead and drop a subscription and a like on this video. You know, subscribe to the channel, like it. We're on our road to 150K. Let's, let's, let's see how close we can get before the year is out. We're actually getting pretty, pretty close to 137 right now. So we just keep that, keep it moving, right? We just keep it moving. Now, what I want to dive into here is something Moore's Law is dead said. He is a tech YouTuber who has, you know, reportedly self-reported inside sources at NVIDIA. And of course, they were talking today about the leaks, right? They were talking about the, the PCB and the, the hardware leaks and all that. And they had some fascinating stuff to say. So, you know, what? we're going to roll uh, part of their clip here for you guys. And then we're going to talk about it. But as per the leak, it looks legit to me personally. And the Switch 2 seems to have 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X, like this channel leaked, bandwidth of 120 gigabytes per second. And so some people were hoping for more capacity, but it should be noted that that is three times the capacity and almost five times the bandwidth of the original Switch. This is good indication for the console, and it should be a godsend for developers when they no longer have to contend with Switch's pitiful four gigabytes of DDR4. <laughs> if only Nintendo would have launched it far sooner and that's just and that is a, a big point to end on is like were this to have launched a year or two ago when i'm told it could have i think the specs would have been very impressive to people but the longer this takes to come out the more it's like is this i mean it might end up competing it will i'm sure at some point end up competing with the steam deck too i don't know it's it it's better than last gen relatively speaking but it doesn't feel like what it could have felt like the two things that i would just say is do i think this will be able to run uh triple a and third party games better than the switch did when it came out i do yeah. i do um and the reason i do is let's make a comparison i believe the original switch at the top of my head launched in 2017 that's after the ps4 pro was even out i mean guys the comparison you would make is the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One had 8 gigabytes of RAM, okay, and then the Switch had 4, so it had half as much. Now, it's launching, I guess, early 2025, it seems, uh, and, you know, that's well into the console life cycle, but kind of at a similar point, maybe a little later, but it has 12 gigabytes compared to 16. It has two-thirds the RAM of the current-gen consoles instead of half the RAM, and with that in mind, it actually even has more RAM than the Series S. So I still look at the Switch 2 as, or hopefully the Super Switch. I think that's the better name. Um, and I go, I think this is enough that any game they put on the Series S, they can put on this. Whereas every game they put on the Xbox One Slim, they could not put on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, at a minimum, at least this has enough RAM. Although, wow, that is a the, very the low bandwidth. The worst, I don't think either. It's very low bandwidth, <laughs> memory bandwidth, though. I think that isn't that more than the the Steam Deck though. Oh, it might be. Uh, and it's certainly more than the Xbox Split Memory Series S. Uh, yeah, it it is. It's almost fifty percent more bandwidth than the Steam Deck. 
This is what I'm getting at, people. This is almost 50% more bandwidth in the Steam Deck. It has a stronger GPU than the Steam Deck. This is going to run games better than a lot of the haters are saying. It's mm -hmm. just, it would have been more impressive if it came out a year ago. I mean, it's... Because it, it, when it was supposed, when it was conceived of, when I was talking to people at NVIDIA that were excited about it, I was like, oh, man, if this launches like I thought it could have, I was told even in 2023, people would have been like, whoa, you know, this is better yeah. than the Steam Deck. Cheaper, probably same price, actually, is the Steam Deck. CPU is a little weaker for gaming, but, you know, I don't know how much CPU processing power Mario requires. Um, I, I thought it would have been very impressive. So, yeah, you can obviously see here that Moore's Law is that is very, very happy uh, in general with the specs. He actually seems a bit more excited about the specs than his partner on the show. Uh, his partner on the show seems to be kind of like, ah, uh, whatever. I, I do got to say, you know, when you're talking about spec stuff, it, the games are what really matter. Like, if we look at the state of the industry right now, uh, we can have all the powerful specs in the world, but none of that means the games are going to sell well. Like, we can have, like, you know, a potential $400 million game in Concord come out. I know there's some um, debates on if that was really the budget, but either way, it was definitely a hundred million plus game and watch it flop and go, man, do the graphics and the visuals and the CGI style stuff, does this really even matter for a game or is it really more about the gameplay and how fun it is and not going with crazy budget, something like Astrobot or even the upcoming Echoes of Wisdom this week, both of which are going to outsell Concord. Astrobot already has, and we know that Echoes of Wisdom is going to handily outsell Concord. So maybe the future of the industry is less about pushing the bleeding edge and worrying about the top end tech and more about smaller budgets, more inventive gameplay and stuff. I don't know, just throwing that out there. But the thing is, uh, there's some fascinating stuff here when we talk about this being more powerful than a Steam Deck. And it seems to be significantly more powerful than a Steam Deck, not just by a little bit, by actually quite a bit. Uh, while the Steam Deck has more RAM overall, I think it's got 16 gigs, uh, that doesn't make it fast RAM. It's not nearly as fast as what's going to be in the Nintendo Switch 2, and that makes a huge difference. The speed of the RAM matters. It's bus matters. So I do think that we're going to see that Switch 2 is actually more powerful than a Steam Deck. Now, that's not really too surprising if you consider Steam Deck came out in February of 2022. Uh, Steam Deck also doesn't have like an enhanced mode when you dock it, right? So like the Switch in docked mode, obviously it would be significantly more powerful. And handheld mode, eh, okay, handheld mode might actually not be quite as good. Hard to really know. Nintendo Switch is going to be running at a much lower wattage. I know that Moore's Law is that it's convinced it's going to be around 5 watts. I think the current switch is between like eight to ten, to eight to ten or twelve. Uh, Nintendo might have multiple modes, so like you have a five watt mode in handheld that might give you, you know, three hours, three and a half hours of battery life. But then you know you can go with increased clocks and everything, and have like an eight watt mode or a ten watt mode. But then you cut the battery life down to like two hours. So Nintendo will probably play around with that. They did it on Switch, right? That's the only reason I'm bringing it up is they actually gave us multiple different clock modes or gave developers multiple different clock modes in handheld, and they could choose which one they want. Wanted to use the best suit their game like maybe a smaller indie title would obviously stick with the five watt mode but then say something like uh, assassin's creed shadows might go with the highest possible output nintendo allows like a 10 watt mode that might reduce the battery life down to like an hour and a half but then you still get that full triple a experience of assassin's creed shadows so uh obviously that would just be the choice of the developer on how much battery life they wish to have available for their games but that is the kind of uh where we sit here with this because it's going to be more powerful than the Steam Deck. Steam Deck came out in February of 2022. Steam Deck 2 is on the horizon. We know Valve's CEO already mentioned it's going to be a more premium system, and it's going to be more expensive. We don't know how much more expensive, but I'm betting that the Steam Deck 2's lowest version, because there'll probably be multiple versions with different storage options and screens and all that, I think the lowest possible version is going to launch at like 500, and that will be more expensive I believe anyways, then the launch price of Switch 2, meaning that in the Switch 2 price category, there won't be like a massively competitive system unless obviously Microsoft or Sony bring something to the table, which there are rumors that both of them are going to bring something to the table. We don't know what they're going to charge for those kind of things. And if the PlayStation 5 and then the PlayStation 5 Pro is anything to go off of, I could see those also being like 500 plus dollar devices uh, where Switch ends up just sitting in a category of its own or Switch 2 does. Uh, kind of like it does right now. We have a $200 Switch Lite. Like, there's nothing 
you know, gaming wise, that's really that cheap anywhere, let alone the, obviously the 300 and the 350, you can obviously get used steam decks and stuff down that low. And the ROG ally has come down to about $400 right now, which within striking distance of the switch OLED at least, but there's a new ROG ally two coming next year. That's again, going to be a lot more expensive because it's using more premium components. So in the end, I think Nintendo switch two is really well positioned. And what this really has to do with is third party support steam deck gets a ton of third-party support with games running fairly well switch 2 should get similar third-party support with games running even better uh and you know i'm not crazy saying this we actually known this for a while if we go all the way back to 2023 in september tom henderson was like really excited for the nintendo switch 2 and its tech we'll see launching on xbox series x and s playstation 5 nintendo switch 2 and pc a heck of a lot in 12 to 18 months well obviously we're only on to the need more towards the 18 month mark because uh, 12 months is coming up. 12 months is coming up on Monday. So obviously uh, we're looking more towards the 18th uh, month mark of that because Nintendo has to reveal the system, right, for third parties to talk about it. But uh, that is that is very, very um, interesting to me. I think it's very uh, obvious that, you know, third parties are going to be all over this in a way they weren't. Paul Gale Network's actually come on our podcast and talked about it as well. Paul Gale Network just being like, hey, man, Third parties that weren't doing anything on Switch in 2017 are super excited for Switch 2, meaning that Switch 2 must have enough power to make third parties be fairly happy with it. Um, you can see even sort of a reference to it here where he says, for some, this may be obvious, but for others, it will serve as a little extended boost of confidence as to where these few developers that are positive on the Nintendo Switch successor come from. They span the globe and they represent three continents. Again, while some will say no-brainer, others will be glad to know that the likelihood for representation of certain types of games being present on Nintendo system has gone up. Then you go with obviously Square Enix being disappointed again in their revenue coming off of the Final Fantasy series, the last two Final Fantasy games. You kind of can look at it as, well, Square's clearly going to want everything to end up being on Nintendo because that's like the major platform they're not on that could get a lot of sales. I know this is really hard for people to swallow. Uh, and this isn't me saying that Nintendo Switch is better than everything. Nintendo Switch is the market leader. And I think people forget that or have a hard time accepting that AAA games today are not releasing on the system that is the market leader. And I feel like because of that, we're seeing third-party game sales actually negatively impacted because they're ignoring the largest single individual game audience on one given platform. Now, PC is the biggest overall platform, of course, but when we're just talking about dedicated hardware. Nintendo Switch is the biggest audience, and so many third-party games are just like, nah, peace, you ain't for me. And it's because they're making these games that, from a technological standpoint, might not run very well on Switch, even with really good optimization. They might end up looking so much lesser in terms of their visuals compared to their contemporaries that it doesn't feel worth it. But then you start to see, well, hey, guess what? Uh, PlayStation 5 does not have 100 million in sales right now. Um, Xbox is probably petering along at 25 to 30 million right now. That gives you, what, 90 million consumers to maybe reach versus Nintendo Switch's 143, and when it's all said and done, 150 million plus. Uh, yeah, you're not on the market leader. You're going to not have great sales all the time. So uh, that's the thing with Switch, too. I think third parties are like, look, we didn't bet big on Switch. We missed out on it. And now Switch 2 has enough power where we can at least make pretty good looking games. Maybe we can't make them at the bleeding edge like we might want to do, but we can make them look pretty damn good and still run well. Then heck yeah, we're going to support Switch 2 because what happens if Switch 2 is the market leader again? What if Switch 2 comes out and while well, it starts behind PlayStation 5, ends up shooting past it in five or six years? Yeah, so this is one of those situations where I think they don't want to miss the gravy train the second time around. And you throw in the fact that third parties aren't really excited because it must have enough power uh, to at least run what they want to do or at least make some pretty decent looking games the way they want to make them. Uh, so if they don't feel as held back by the technology now, and now we get some decent running games, we get Call of Duty Black Ops, which we already know we're getting Call of Duty anyways because there's a 10-year contract. But to me, I just feel like Nintendo Switch is perfectly perfectly positioned switch to that is to be a go-to platform yet again for third parties and first party and that was the one thing switch was lacking and we talked about it on the podcast last week the one thing 
was that, you know what, if you wanted to play third-party games, you needed to own another system. It just is what it is. And even if you bought them on Switch, like I have with Hogwarts Legacy, it is not a comparable experience to other platforms, even though I do think it's a pretty good port. Still, you play that, and then you boot up the Xbox or PlayStation version, and you're like, oh, boy. I'm, I'm missing out on quite a bit, aren't I, here? Uh, and so that's not going to have that sort of feeling with Switch 2. I think that's the general consensus here is a game like Hogwarts Legacy, yes, will look better on PlayStation 5. Yes, will look better on a PlayStation 5 Pro or PC, but it won't look demonstrably better. It might. It, it's not going to look like the Switch 2 is this version of a game that is just not even close to on par with the rest no it'll just look like you're lowering your settings on pc to play a game and i think that's pretty cool i think that's really awesome and i'm really excited uh, for what's to come from this platform and uh man the more that keeps coming up even more as long as dead video today which you know is a little tepid but a little excited at the same time it's still one of those man oh man oh man oh man oh man uh this is some exciting stuff Third-party support is going to be huge. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. How much do you care about the third-party games, the AAA ones in particular, coming to Switch 2? What ones are you hoping come that we didn't get before? Maybe Kingdom Hearts 4? Uh, I know, we got Kingdom Hearts. But how about native? How about a native version, right? That'd be nice. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.